and welcome to another episode of Mondays with Meg and Tom. And here we are for another unplanned conversation yeah. during the season of Lent. How exciting. All right. Boy, oh boy. But we've got ideas. We do have, we have, we've we have got ideas. conversation starter. Yeah, we do. So I have, man, I think I've taken a deep dive. I have recently been listening to The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill mm -hmm. on Spotify. Um, my streaming service. I don't know if I can say Spotify out loud on television or on a radio. On this, whatever this is, I'm sure I can. We're not big enough. It's not a big deal. Anyways. <laughs> I've been listening to The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill. A fine, po a really popular podcast. I've not heard, I've not listened to it myself. Yeah, well, I think it came popular. out in like, I think the podcast, I want to say it came out in like 2001, mm -hmm. I think. And Rip. so it was like... 2001? No, no, 2021. Okay. Oh, man, I'm having a hard... It's like, is it, it's 21 years old? No, no. It's like a year old at this okay. point. Okay. Because I think they put out, it was like May and June of last year, okay. I think. And so, like, it got sent to me then. And I listened to, like, the first, maybe 10 minutes of the first episode and was like, yeah, no, not right now. Mm. And so I backburnered it. And then for some reason this week, I, it just felt like a good idea to start listening to it again. Yeah. So I started listening to it again. And then Discovery Plus just put out a docu a docu series. You said Discovery Plus. Are you just hoping to get like free Yeah. free subscriptions yes. to these things? We yes, just keep because plugging then I don't things. Have to pay Is for this them? product placement? Yeah, that's what that is. Oh my goodness, we've yeah. already moved to product placement. No, we can't do that because that's what these two Okay, okay. Got to reel it back in. I've Sorry. been streaming uh, I watched the first episode of Hillsong Exposed. Oh. Which is, I don't, I don't know if that's what it's called, but that's. I think it, that's the name of it. Is that the name of it? Yeah. So. so, and there were some things in like that that I have really, I don't want to say latched onto, but it's like, whoa. So it's between the podcast and the docu series. I am in the downfall. It feels like of this huge evangelical movement. Well, let's let's go with some of the things you said. There were some of the things in this first episode, yeah, that you locked into or connected, okay, to or connected themselves to you. However, you want to phrase that. So the big thing someone was talking about, um, the music, like Hillsong Church, they're like, they created this like music brand mm -hmm. to go with their thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, as part of worship, music is such like the entertainment factor right. is so big. And it's like. It's Any, not just music. It is the performance right, of that music. Right. It's a high level yes. of... Yes. They won, like, a couple of years ago, they won one of those, like, Academy, whatever the music academy equivalent is. They oh, really? won a thing for a CD that they put out. A Grammy? Yeah. I don't know if it was... Maybe. I don't know. Okay. It was a, it was a big deal. And so it was like, they were talking about, and the experience that I've had listening to Hillsong music has always been such like a, like I attended a church for a while that would like play one of their songs or like mm -hmm. play music that was like very similar to like that, like stage presency kind of thing. And it's in the moment you like, for some reason you get like so caught up in it and you're like, oh, the spirit's moving and you're like bawling. Yeah. Yeah, I remember something I watched a long time ago. They were interviewing people who went to a church similar. I don't know. Yeah. If it, was, it could have been Hillsong. I don't know. And I, I always remember this young woman who's like, I just I just come for the music and I love the music so much. And I, you know, I'll sit through the other stuff, mm. the other stuff. The other, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but I just, I just, the music. it's it's all about the music for right. me. And I remember, I remember her. 
Yeah. Very enthusiastically. Of course, you know, as one of those who did some of the other stuff, I was like, yeah, of course. Right. Like, yeah, everyone loves the music. <laughs> uh, fine. But it's, but there was, I think she's a psychologist on this episode of Hillsong Exposed. Oh, really? And she's talking about how, uh, she makes this like comment that she's like, everybody is always like, oh, the spirit moved and that's in the music. And I was weeping and yada, yada, yada. And she was like, don't you think they did it that way on purpose? Mm -hmm. There's a certain way the chord progresses and the chord changes that creates an emotional right. response. I know Hillsong comes out of, uh, I, I think the, the person who founded that and get it, got it going uh, comes out of Assembly of God, which is a more, is that Pentecostal, Pentecostal. emotional, right. Right. you know, that's kind of their, right. uh, Yeah. I don't want to say brand, but that's well, kind like of the Pentecostal is, brand. Yeah. Well, and Pentecostal and is about emotionalism and, and, right. and the, the, when the spirit moves, right. It's, you I, move. I have you felt move. an emotion right. and that's the way the spirit has moved. Right. And that's the way, I, you know, that's, I think sometimes what that, that phrase means for right. folks. And so she was just like, like, has it ever occurred to you that they do that on purpose? Like yeah. that specific chord change. Is it manipulative? Right. And I was just like, oh, yes, like that. Yes. So oh. that was a big thing. Um, there's one of the guys that they interview um, is he runs the social media, the Instagram account, Preachers and Sneakers. Right. Which is funny. I wore my sneakers today because I was going to talk about this. They're very nice. Yeah, they're very cheap sneakers. Let me just throw that out there. These are not expensive sneakers. Second hand. Yeah. Um, You're not a real minister. Correct. I'm not yet. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> but he was talking about how, like, at first he started it as kind of like an offhand thing and was just kind of like, oh, like, look at all these young, hip Right. It was, it was funny. Right. And then it's like, listening to him talk about it he he never says anything like negative about he's like oh well that's how they're choosing to spend their money mm -hmm. and it's like oh but is that how they should be like do you really need to wear 800 dollars sneakers does that help you proclaim the word of god better to have your 800 dollars sneakers on right it, it kind of points to a whole different culture right you know the celebrity yes. kind of culture again right. that Hillsong and that's the status you have celebrities who would status right Hillsong right churches and so I mean I'm an old bald man I don't have muscles yeah I don't look good in Ooh. muscles I don't, you've got the tattoos you give me cred yeah <laughs> they're covered up most of the time but they're it, I mean this this reminds me of something we talked about before uh with um, mm -hmm. our Lutheran minister, Nadia, Nadia, who again has some celebrity right attached to her, right, and then people emulate and such, you know, and try to you know follow that kind of, of piece to it. I mean, right. what happens it isn't part of this is it, is about you know. There's the shlomos like us who are in the trenches. Right. And then there's the celebrities and those who aspire to almost like a celebrity status. Right. Or or at least to touch and what? Imitate or what's the right word there? To kind of. Yeah, I think imitate. <clears throat> so now, so it becomes. But, it's, but they want the status. I don't, right. Like, but it becomes a stereotype almost. Right. Like, you know, mm -hmm. what may have been one person's thing as it keeps getting repeated and repeated, right. which is kind of what we were talking about with Nadia, you know, as her look gets right. repeated and repeated, then it becomes stereotypical and then it becomes, you know, then when does it turn into parody? Right. Well, like at some point, like it what like the does sneaker this guy, thing, I think, does. And then it, but no, because he's. I know, but I mean, he's. He reveals the self-parody right. of it. Yeah. The, the expensive sneakers and the, 
certain way you got to move and the stage and right. the performance and the lights and, the lights, and right. it's a stage show you know you no longer have you know, a chancel area or right. whatever you have. You this, do have a VIP section. You have a VIP. Oh, do you? Oh, my gosh. That's very interesting. I mean, that a they VIP section. They branch off, or not anymore, because I was saying, Hillsong has lost over half of their U.S. Yeah, churches. yeah. And now and now it's dropping like a rock. Oh, yeah. It's, it's. And even those who are found success in, a, in, in the article you sent me to kind of get me yeah. Up to speed. To bring you into it. <laughs> yeah, I remember them saying, you know, now it's interesting that even these charismatic leaders of, um, I guess it was, I guess they were doing it more in like, um, what's like the McDonald's and the Wendy's? What was that? What is a that franchise? Called? Like a franchise system. Yeah. And so it's like ministers now are pulling their franchises and right. renaming themselves. Right, right. And, and they say so they don't be associated with it. He makes the point in the article and he's like, and I hope you come with us. Right. Because what happens if they don't? Huh? Those are those are expensive things. Then to you do. can't buy your sneakers anymore. Well, that is. Like Yeah. Well, and so like that's what happens to status pastors after they lose their right. status. Right. Do you I, I don't know. But it's it's been so interesting just to think about how like like not just with like it's funny that it it's all coming out now and in this season of what like they've like Hillsong as a church um, the global church is one of the phrases that they use to describe right. their whole little church empire I don't know what to call it other than empire I mean isn't it a is it a denomination or is it a business venture? Is it a corporate? Is it a Christian right. corporation? Is right. it what is well, it? Well, and it's yeah, it's it's a I think it's it's a Christian corporation. Okay. I think. Because it seems to be it's built not more, a denomination. <coughs> right. I mean is they it they pull from like the he was Pentecostal. All that right. was his so Brian, uh our dude who founded Hillsong. Mm-hmm. That was an interesting story they talk about. Like, they, he gets this like church kind of going in Australia, and then he decides, I gotta go to America and watch the televangelists and the things like that Ooh. to figure out how to do this better. How do I get money? He's like, he can't figure that out in Australia. Mm -hmm. So he comes here. And that's when he starts to learn. He's like, it's easy to get money from people. Mm -hmm. And that's how this this whole worship experience is built around money, getting the money. There's a strong element of commerce. Yes, yeah. you and can it, buy T-shirts. You mm -hmm. can buy products, music. You can, and that was the other thing that like helped fund their whole institution was it was like in the early 2000s they started. They would like write all these worship songs. Mm -hmm. And then if you and your small church wants to use the, this worship pay. song, you have to pay for it. Right. You got to pay copyright and right. whatever. And so churches everywhere. And then it's a pub are that's the publishing the company of right. it, right? The publishing arm. And so then it's like that was just money, money, money coming in. Right. So, it, wow. Extreme wealth. It is. And, and you know, the, the two questions are. What does extreme wealth, something like that? I mean, can you be both corporately a corporately successful, and we'll use the air quotes, church? Mm -hmm. uh, where was I going? Can you be? Can you be that? And then, you know, a theologically ground it i mean do you lose something yeah i think you do do you give something up i mean when i was, when you mentioned that there was a vi i have not heard that there were VIP, There's a vip section vip sections that just makes isn't there a story in the gospels about jesus talking about don't take the yeah the greater seats yeah. always sit in the the back and There's but i'm sure section. these vip sections mm -hmm. that's a that's a whole different mm -hmm. mentality i mean can you does that so violate the grounding principles of the gospel 
the corporate aspect of it, that it can't be one and the same. I mean, is what's the difference between corporate Christianity and mm -hmm. way back in history when Constantine made the church the official religion of right. the Roman Empire when right. it became connected with empire and being connected with commerce. Right. What does that do to being the, the theology of it? Well, Money and power. I mean, I think, just... yeah, I don't know if it was a video he did or a sermon. I think it was a sermon, but it's, you can't, it's not God and. Right. So it's not God and extreme wealth. Yeah, that's that. But that's success. I mean, how much do we admire? That's like. And how much does that draw people? And it's almost like, you, you know, the, 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 I guess the practical argument is yes, but they're hearing, they're hearing the gospel proclaimed. Which, but are you though? Like, if you're I was about to say, sitting... which gets us to Driscoll, because here's oh, Driscoll, gosh. who was very popular, right? Uh, but that whole thing, that whole inversion, I think, yeah, also went back into his theology and right. what he was proclaiming, right? I mean, I feel like that's part of what you've been telling me that you've been finding with that podcast, yeah, with the podcast, he's like. The, the thing that always jumps out is when he starts screaming mm -hmm. and it's like, if your brand doesn't fit my brand, then you're going to hell. You are the one. Brand. Interesting yeah. choice of words brand. there. Yeah. No, if, brand. You're, if your level of Christianity doesn't fit what I say it has to be, right. then you don't fit in here. You have no business here but that podcast that was wild the way that just go idolized fight club mm -hmm. like of all and it wasn't even the novel like it wasn't like oh it's, it's a, a we love the book it's the freaking movie <laughs> okay so like not that that makes it fight club you shouldn't be idolized in the church that like shouldn't be his thing. He should not rally his <clears throat> men. Core, huh? No, he should not rally the men of the church around Fight Club. Right, because I, I, wasn't that part of what he got caught up in was that defining what real masculinity yeah, was. Yeah, it was a huge thing for him. <clears throat> and there, there, I remember there being an undercurrent that, you know, all the the grace and love and whatever that that's not manly enough right that's yes not, that was his that big christianity thing. is not manly that's enough. what he he became a christian when he started dating the daughter of a pastor right he went to church with her the church that he went to he describes it as being this like like pink and like very loving and all that he's like and that's Blech. not it Blech. and it's like what <laughs> sir <laughs> do you know what love is yeah sometimes love is tough but like, not in the way that you're thinking. Right. This is, love isn't Fight Club. That's not, Fight Club's mental illness. That's what's going on <laughs> there. <laughs> Say that one out loud. But it's like the next episode of that podcast is talking about women in the church and how women. Of Driscoll's? Yeah, of Driscoll's. The next episode is. So I paused that one. I was like, oh, we're going to wait. No, I, we're going to wait. I was like, oh, oh we got to wait, I think. Because a lot of these are still coming out of, you know, this, 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 the theology behind a lot of this style mm -hmm. of corporate Christianity is Pentecostal. Or right. it is a very, it's still a very conservative yeah. Christianity. Right. And, you know, I don't know what it is about is it just the the looking for success or is there something is there something in the theology what what do you think well i don't know creates because it's like this I sort never... of thing you know theologically and, and it's like yeah. people 
you know, where it is. I, I bet Driscoll would not have women ministers. I, I don't know about Hillsong, whether they stepped out of their roots. So I don't know about women ministers. You could ministers be a woman Hillsong. leading these things or... There's still you could be a worship leader. You could be a worship song, leader. I, I don't think you can. But not an actual pastor, yeah, right? It doesn't fit the brand. It doesn't fit the brand. Well, it's there was some theology there at some point. Right. I don't know when you know, when does theology become a brand? Um or becomes marketing. Marketing, yeah. At what point at, again this gets, and, but like and how does <coughs> how does nobody I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's like you take these super charismatic people mm -hmm. and it's like, even in the back of your head, if you're thinking, oh, I don't know about this. They're so you're charismatic. And you're caught up in everything. Right. You go too. You show up anyways. Right. You're like, yeah, we're in. Right. When, when some of those messages, are the messages penetrating? Right. Or is it, you know, are they there to the base. But I think it's also, um, is having a personal religion, is it a consumer activity? I mean, again, these are popular. They make lots of money. They, mm -hmm. they rise and then they blow up often Dude, and, and fall, fall just as quickly. Right. And we don't ever seem to Learn, we just kind of no, we just it, wait. It well, just that's the thing. Going. So now I'm like, oh, what's going to be the next thing that's going to do this? Whoop, and then boom, whoosh, right? Uh, because at the center of the organization, there's little accountability, there's a right. lot of uh, we're going to do whatever we can to protect our brand or right. wealth or right. income or right. this thing that's happening. You just sweep all the other stuff under the rug, so even until there's no more room, under you know, the rug. even what happens, and which is probably going to happen to the Hillsong guy. Uh, just watch and see as the, you know, the media eye turns away from it. He'll be given a very nice yeah. golden parachute. They will probably continue to pay him a very nice something on. He'll he'll still have some sort of strong financial yeah. tie. He'll still benefit from this, right. even though you know there's this for people on our level. I mean, yeah. Meg, if you were found to be a sexual abuser or whatever, right. uh, you would be shown the door That's it, I'm out. and you would not get anything, no. but somehow in this corporate culture, because you're it's because the they CEO think they can hide it so well. or, or whatever, they have right, right. The money. Right. And they have but the again, money. again, that's, that's all that undermining of then right. the integrity of our theology as Christians, there's no Christian theology is not the defining factor with that. Right. So again, my question I think I'm getting to is, you know, that kind of model or type of church or whatever turns personal religion into a consumer mm -hmm. activity. Right. Well, and that's like, well, then it just becomes an activity. Right. And then it's like, I like what are the feelings that you're having during that activity, and do you take them with you when you leave the building? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but is it about because you have to take it, it with feelings? you when you leave the building? Is it feelings? When you listen when, to like how, the inter how far like the does, Hillsong how do, interviews, how do feelings take you? Right, but when you listen to the Hillsong interviews, it's like you have people who are just like I don't really know about church, but they go and it's like the feet they like talk about is like, I like that oh I felt right. Right. So then I kept going back. Right. It's like, okay, well, what, what did you hear while you were there? I don't know, but I felt good. But I mean, here, this is the season of Lent. You know, what does the season of Lent have to do with feelings? Or, well, I'm currently writing a sermon it, about lamenting, so. About, yeah, but even lamenting should take you some, I mean, if it's just feelings. Right. You know, what is, is, can well, you I, need the next can step. I you define, can't just have the feeling. You have to do... Right. What kind of discipleship the, the feelings create? You know, what... Weak. What what kind of discipleship does just consuming a product that you're putting out and, and you know, being a part of a brand, 
It, it's kind of like the brand, right? Then. Well, it makes me think about you know a couple of years ago. I always say a couple of years ago, which now can mean ten to fifteen. Mm -hmm. That's a sign of getting old. A couple of years ago, thirty years ago. Um, anyway, remember uh, companies were doing. They were trying to do sort of like. Um, Oh, again, my words aren't, aren't here. Where you would, if you buy my product, then I will do, I will give this. And that had a phrase attached to it. You know, Appearance if you buy my shoe, no, if you buy my shoes, every pair of shoes bought, I'm thinking about the Tom. Yeah, okay. Shoes. If you buy my shoes, then I give a pair of shoes to children who need them, who need them somewhere in the world. Right. Right. And so it was that kind of, a lot of people bought those shoes yeah. because I'm I can still consume, but right. I can I can mm. consume and not have any cost to me necessarily. I might right. pay a little more, right? But well, they're I, not cheap I'm, shoes. I'm but doing I'm good. Buying. I'm doing good right. in the world, so I'm I'm still doing. But good. are you? Because what about when the shoes that go to those children and they don't are like not them. good quality? <laughs> they're no, not good they're shoes. not good quality shoes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, but that's but that became sort of a way of I can do good in the world, right? But I still don't have to change right. or really look at myself. It's like I if can have I'm good always, intentions. I have good intentions, and and it and for a while, you know, as as things, it was a good trend, right? And then it went away, and now we're doing something else, mm -hmm. and. And so with these this Christian consumer, corporate consumer model culture thing. Culture things. Yeah. Again, what is it doing? Is it is does this model help to make disciples or does it create? What does it create? I mean, is this part of why Christianity as a whole is kind of where it's at right now, which I would say it's not in a great place. Great spot. Yeah. <laughs> But is it because we still don't understand today what's the point of having a personal religion? Right. If it's not to go to heaven. If it's not to go to well, right. that because even going to the, heaven has turned into the consumer. And maybe that's why these particular theologies work well, because it was all about I mean what's how, well, it's how like different you is give it? the church X amount of money, then the you will get your you, right. Yes, then you get gospel. you get back. You'll get it and you'll get it back. God and will blessings. give it back to you. You'll get blessings right. and, and that sort of thing. Right. Um, well, wait, was that a big like you? You grew up when like the televangelists. Yeah, when that, that was, was a thing. That was their hook. Right. It was a lot of you if know you, you give, send us this right. Then this will happen to you. Right. We we're old mainline. Mm -hmm. How does does that have anything to do with us? Is any connection to us? It, I mean, is it too much of a temptation sometimes to us? What what do you think all that teaches us in the old mainline moving forward? And what we think we're doing, um, and how we go about trying to make disciples for these huge huge churches like not like the first Presbyterian, but not like the like that huge church but like like the hillsong churches right again or this that model we're talking about that of brand. people who who try to emulate the best right. they can on this on a smaller scale perhaps right. You know that model of church yeah for them well dot, it's dot, like dot. for them it's like do you see the wealth that so-and-so had and that's why you do what you do because you want the money mm -hmm. is that a motivating factor right. i mean do you think like is that because i'm not because don't you tie? Don't you kind of have to tie into that? If you're going to be, right. if you're going to follow that model in any way, you still have to have that right. charismatic right. somebody mm -hmm. male, probably generally, because yeah. of, that's still they're rooted still in that 
right. theological there. stratum or whatever the right word is. Um, and isn't that part of their motive? Is that part of their motivation? I mean, it's got to be right. Like it's it, it. I don't see it. I mean, I would love to hear if, any other way. I would love to hear if there's somebody or a church that participates in that, that finds success, and then their leader person denies the money and the wealth or right. lives very modestly. Right. right. And, you know, I don't know if we don't hear that because it doesn't make well, it's not cool. an interesting. Maybe we don't want to hear, like, no, well, we don't want to hear that. We do want to hear that. I want to know. Like, <laughs> I, it's like this. Right. Oh, no, but I need this mansion for my, right. my family of four. And I need my jet. And, and I need I my need... jet. And I need my $800 sneakers. Right. And, and, and I mean, once you move to that level, again, right. have you so violated some very basic tenets of yeah i think jesus would flip your table like i think <laughs> i do i think that that's like the i do i think jesus would be like ah yeah this is what you're choosing to do and it's like and at that point it's like anytime religious folk really like to do the this is what god is telling me i should god is not telling you to hoard your wealth like that. That is, <clears throat> you and God need to have a bigger talk then. Right. If that's. Right. Ooh. Like, well, you know, again, I put God behind me. That gives me all the right. authority to do then anything. I can say that and I, I can I do whatever I want to. Right. And that that feeds back into that ego. Right. That that money and right. fame and right. whatever. All, that's I mean, that's all the stuff that's coming. Right. And then you get put in that protective bubble. Mm -hmm. Well, you can do anything, and that bubble's going to protect you. Right. The bubble's going to protect you. Yeah. Whether you started out, you know, maybe you started with good intentions or something, but it seems like somehow the, that system, as far as, again, Christian theology, mm -hmm. basic, some basic Christian theology right. goes, that system is so corrupting is it, it yeah. completely undoes it. Mm -hmm. And it's like you get a little bit of power and then like I want a little bit more. Right. If you give a mouse a cookie. If you and give I want a little bit more. And I want a little bit more. If you give and a, then I have if all you this give power. Minister expensive sneakers. Right. <laughs> then they just want an expensive car and an expensive house and then I'll plane and then but it's like it's like this is like, oh well, just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. A little bit more. Like it's never enough. Why isn't it why When is it right? When you were talking about my brain did this thing that uh was like oh i have god behind me so then it's like yeah it's like yeah i have god behind me too but that makes me check myself so i don't wreck myself right, right so it's right. like i do the yeah i am a christian and i read the gospel and i think about the way that jesus lived and the people that jesus interacted with the people that mm -hmm. jesus ate meals with Hung out with. Not the high muckamuck. No! Well, but still, he did go to the VIP parties. He did some high muckamuck. Yeah. He didn't get too high because they didn't want to muck with him. Right. Uh, but, you know, he, he would eat with the... He rubs elbows a little bit. He rubs elbows with everybody. Yeah. But that, and that's but part of the, the issue. I mean, that was last Sunday. Uh, part of the issue was... These over here were saying, what are you doing rubbing elbows with those but over those there? But those over there, right? Those tax collectors right. and sinners. Those guys. You need to be over here with us. Right. And he was like, then we got the, you know, the lost son parable. Right. The, or the prodigal son parable. Right. Out of that one. Yeah. All the lost. You got the, the sheep, the coin, the, the child. Sheep, the coin. Yeah. The whole, there's a. There's They're all right three, there together. There's three parables I think about that being means lost. something yeah but it wasn't about the person being lost finding their way it was about the other person who was or the god represented right. character in those parables the who finding. searched and searched and until they found 